Good morning, guys. Maritza here. I'm going to continue the series, Understanding Grief, A Deep Transitioning Story. Um, again, going back to childhood, which is where everything stems. I'm sure that many of you have repressed memories, as I know I have. And part of healing is trying to reopen that Pandora box and feeling those painful feelings that we felt when we were younger, the things that were done to us. Because you have to understand that we were very innocent. We were young, we were children molded by parents. Some individuals were never meant to be parents. You know, I think it's, it's cruelty not to create some sort of system where you have to learn child psychology, you have to learn how vulnerable we are as children and how easily we are corrupted, disrupted, disturbed. I mean, whatever words you want to use. So, as I mentioned before, my mom's always been a very sickly lady. From a very young age, she had rods put in her legs and had thyroid problems had to remove the thyroid because it was a tumor. And, you know, my grandmother totally, totally... Um, spoiled her. So, and my grandmother would tell me, I'm so sorry. I'm, it's my fault. I did this. My grandmother is the only saving grace I had. Wonderful, wonderful lady. She um, taught me about God and my grandfather died when I was one years old. So she kind of made me the center of her universe. And, and that was my saving grace. Um, because my mother, frankly, I don't believe that she was equipped to be a mother. Not everyone is, and that's okay. Not everyone's meant to be a parent. But people think they have to do that, and then they end up messing up little people. So the thing with my mom was she wanted to make me some sort of doll, some sort of little princess. <clears throat> and she fought completely my personality. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I believe that we all have different personalities. There are women that are a little more masculine than other women. There are men that are a little more feminine than other men. I mean, we see it daily. It's society that wants to put everybody in a box and tries to tell people, don't act this way. You were born this way. You have to act this way. And I think that's where the damage is caused. And I think that's where the confusion is caused. So she constantly would reprimand me how I walked, how I talked, how I wanted to dress, and you know, how the discomfort that I showed with these little frilly dresses that she had made for me. Um, we were pretty well off, you know, in Cuba. And, um, you know, we had uh, a maid, you know. Uh, my grandfather was high ranking in the, I think the, the Navy. And, you know, we were pretty well off. And so she would have little dresses made for me and I didn't show, I mean, <laughs> it, was, it was like awful, these, these little freely little things. And I was always like, really, you know, tomboyish from a very young age. Um, and, and I think I had a combination. I mean, you guys see it, I have a combination. And that's, that's okay, that's my personality. That's not, that's not sinful in any way. I mean, you, you can't tell a sparrow not to be a sparrow. You know, the problem lies when we try to disrupt our world and do the things that we do that modern science has allowed. Again, I'm not being critical of whoever does it. That's up to you. It's your life. You're entitled to do whatever it is that you do. But when you entice individuals with poor coping mechanism, individuals that have a lot of trauma, and then you're enticed by this forbidden fruit kind of thing and you're going to do it because you think it's going to make your life better then you embark on that journey and that journey that i'm talking about is transitioning now i can't put all the blame on my mother my father was very abusive he passed in april um and he as he got older he changed but during my youth um he was also a byproduct of his upbringing you know, so it's it's almost like a vicious cycle. He, um, oh, we're doing this again, are we? Okay. 
not going to allow that to happen. So he was a byproduct of his own child, um, childhood years. He was an alcoholic and that's, I would guess the way he coped with things. Um, and when he drank, he became very abusive. And so between both of them, I mean, they would fight. It was a very dysfunctional household. I remember I would hide under the bed when I, my dad would come home. He would come home drunk from work all the time. And it was like World War III in my house. You know, dad would break things. Mom would be yelling at him and they'd be arguing. And then he hit her. And it was just something that a child should never have to endure or see. So between having that type of mother that wanted to break my spirit and I'm sure she didn't mean to you know my mother's a she's a good lady she has good qualities about her but then there's a lot of things as we all do she was never in love with my father she married him because she thought she would never find any love in her life because she has a big uh, deformity on her neck from the operation they they, um, they gave her when she was eight and so that always created this thing. And my grandmother, when God bless her, she'd always tell her it's better to be loved than to love. So, you know, my mom was going to get ready to call off the wedding and my grandmother didn't allow it. So it probably would have been the best, you know, but that's what happens when you have overbearing parents that, that want to control your life. So a lesson here for parents is you have to allow your child their autonomy. You may not like the way they walk, the talk, the dress, but that's who they are. And if you try to break their spirit, you're actually creating bigger problems. So, can't only blame my parents. Influences in, in my life. They would have um, friends over. This guy was more than a friend. He was like a really best friend to my grandfather. And he was seen almost like an uncle. He was trusted. We have to be so ever careful who we trust around our children. This man that I'm speaking about molested me from the time that I was eight years old till the time I was 12, till the time I said no more. In the beginning, he made me feel special. He made me feel like I was an adult. And he would, I let him in the house because I trusted him. He was part of the family. So he would come knocking on the door. He knew somehow that I was there alone and my mom and dad were working. And when I was eight years old, that's when he started the fondling and then he would bring me gifts. And then you start feeling these guilty feelings. This It's like, it's, is it my fault? And then you're like, you can't say anything because you don't want to get this person into trouble. It's like the mind of a child is it's so, so complicated. So that kind of got me turned off to men besides the fact that I had an abusive, alcoholic, violent father and then that I was sexually molested. So I didn't want men to touch me. I was attracted to them but I feared them. In that fearing, you kind of figure, well, if I fear this, there's like men and women, there's only two, right? So you can't do one because you don't trust them, so you try the other. And I think also trying to heal the mother wound, I was trying to find in women what I could never get from my mother. I wanted her to love me. I wanted her to be pleased by me. I did everything and nothing that I ever did was ever pleasing. It's like I was always trying to protect her from my dad too, which is something that a child should never have to do. So it was like a weird, weird chemistry going on there. And, and it's just shaped who I am. And, you know, I'm still trying to figure myself out and through these videos, you know, and, and through prayer and, and, and through just reflecting on why I have done what I've done in my life. It's crazy. I mean, who detransitions five times? Who keeps going back and forth like that? Someone who's very hurt, someone who's very confused, someone who doesn't have the answers and trying to find the answers and trying to cope has made a terrible mess of her life. So, you know, I, I left home and because my parents are getting a divorce and I can stand you know, being around my mother, um, she started dating right away. And then it was something that, and I hate, you know, to really put things out there, but there was a lot of unfaithfulness. And I saw that. So I was like, so relationships aren't real. Love isn't real. People 
aren't real. You know, there's just, that created a lot of problems with me trusting and having relationships and really giving my heart because I was afraid I was going to get hurt. Like I saw my parents hurt each other. So it is so imperative that before you have children, you got your life together. And I know life isn't easy, you know, but realize that you have the power to mess up a little life and then they grow up to be a mess up adult as you see right here. The grace of God, God has always tried to protect me. You know, I could have been dead. I got into drugs, alcohol, all sorts of crazy behaviors, you know, because of what I saw. I didn't have parents, you know. They were trying to be cool parents. So it was like they would party and I was privy to that those that partying and, and things of that nature that no one should ever have to go through. No one should ever have to go through. And I know, you know, they did the best they could. You know, we're all humans. We make mistakes. But then we have to understand why we behave the way that we behave. Because of these things that we saw affected, created, molded our lives. And I know I'm an adult now. I know I have to take responsibility for my actions. And I do. But behaviors are created. Poor coping mechanisms are created. People drink, they gamble, they shop, um, they watch adult movies, you know, and things of that nature. And it's, we're not meant to be that way. We're meant to be righteous people. Eve wasn't meant to eat from that apple, but her curiosity got the best of her. So anyway, guys, let's see how long I've been going here. So I, um, I want to be able to take my past, heal from it, forgive my parents, forgive those that hurt me, forgive myself. You know, that's part of the healing. Understand that we have to be mindful how we behave, you know, how we navigate life. Because it affects not only ourselves, but it affects others. And the mechanisms that we use to walk through life have ramifications. If we take drugs, that has ramification. If we drink, that has ramification. If we overeat, that has ramification. If we undereat, that has ramification. If we indulge in adult movies, if we indulge in promiscuous behavior with many different sex partners, that has ramifications. You know, when we transition, that has ramifications, not just towards ourselves because of the procedures that we're doing, the chemicals that we're putting in our bodies, but it has ramifications for the people around us the people that we hurt, the confusion that we cause. And frankly, in the end, I don't believe that it solves absolutely nothing. For a lot of people, I'm not saying for everyone, for myself, it didn't solve anything. It just created a whirlwind of craziness. Because I know I can never be a man. I am a woman. A woman with her own personality, with her own different traits. I don't have to be all frilly and, and whatever. And yet sometimes I do enjoy, I mean, I remember I've gone through stages in life where I let my hair grow very long. And you guys have seen the pictures. If you haven't, towards the end of the video on my live feed yesterday, I put a little ending and you'll see, you know, beautiful long hair. And, and sometimes I felt okay wearing makeup and wearing girly stuff. And there were times I didn't, there were times, and I don't know if that was developed from all the trauma or is that my personality? Am I to be judged for my personality? Some women are so hyper feminine. They're over the top with the makeup and the heels and the dresses. Some women are not. 
you know, and that's what society has to be a little bit more compassionate with and understanding that we don't all fit into a perfect little box. All right, guys, I'm going to make it short because I, I, the shows are usually an hour and, and I know that, you know, it's hard to sit down and, and listen to or watch a long video. But anyway, I weighed myself this morning. I'm 127.4 pounds from 149. And then I was 21% body fat. I'm down to 16 in three weeks. Somebody trying to tell me something. And all that hard work to put on the muscle. And those of you that have been following me on, on Facebook and have seen my YouTube videos, you know, I was up to 149 pounds, buffing up in three weeks. Boom, 127.4. Yeah, I haven't been back to the gym since I've been sick. So, but still, 127, 149, that's almost 20 pounds. You know, or over. I'm terrible at math. 127, 129, 22 pounds. So, um, yeah, crazy stuff. I'm just grateful where I'm at right now. Um, second chapter of my life or the remaining parts of my life I'm going to really focus on healing so that I can help others as well because that's why we're here to help each other to love one another to spread the love and light not to compare our bank accounts not to be envious of one another that solves nothing all right guys I love you all very much um if you missed last night's live feed um please make sure to watch remember to subscribe hit that like button, share. Um, if you guys want to support the channel, there's several ways of doing that. Um, Google Pay, um, you could also do Zella. I have all the information in the description area. I use MoneyGram, or you can just join my Patreon and support the channel that way. I've got um, one of the um, tiers is $5 to support the show. So I would highly appreciate that if you can and are able. All right, guys, catch you guys later. Love you. I'm going to be, somebody requested for me to write them a song. Um, and so I'll probably be working on that this week. See y'all later. Love you. But remember to love yourselves too and each other. Bye-bye.